Hi, today I want to talk about indexing. This is a super important topic for REC applications and I feel like it's rarely discussed clearly. But first, why is indexing important at all? Let's start simple. Imagine you've got this code. You've got three documents and you add them to the vector store three times. So this means you'll end up retrieving duplicates when you do a similarity search later. Duplicate documents mean bad, confusing results from the LLM. A while ago, I had a call with our service provider and their advice was basically, oh, just delete the whole index and rebuild it from scratch. Okay, sounds reasonable for them, since they make money every time you rebuild it. But think practically. Imagine you've got 10,000 documents and only one tiny change in a single document happens. I think we can all agree that rebuilding the whole index just for one updated document is not really smart. Today, modern vector stores like PG Vector offer something called absurd, which basically means insert if new and update if exists. So this is not much better. We don't end up with duplicated documents, but we still do a ton of unnecessary updates. Better than rebuilding the index, but still far from perfect. Langchain offers an indexing API using something called a record manager. It tracks exactly which documents you've put into the vector store. This helps because if you got a new list of documents and one is missing from before, then Langchain automatically cleans those up. That's great. No more duplicates or outdated documents. But there are still two issues left. The original list of documents still needs to fit into memory, especially if you want to clean out deleted documents later. Langchain compares documents after they've been split into chunks. But chunking can be expensive, especially if you are using something like Azure Document Intelligence or LLM-based chunking. So ideally, you compare documents earlier, before chunking, and handle documents in batches to save memory. So I created my own approach to fix exactly that. So first, we're going to create a run ID. Think of this run ID like a stamp a delivery guy puts on packages to show when they were processed. Every sync run then gets its own unique stamp. During the sync run, the steps are simple. We start a new run, generate a new run ID, and note its start time. Then we check the documents in small batches. For each document, we simply calculate a hash for the whole document and its metadata. Then we look up that hash in a tiny SQL database. If the hash is new, we mark the document as add. If the hash is unchanged, then we mark the document as skip. If the hash changed, we mark the document as update. In every case, we put the current run ID stamp next to the document entry. We then only chunk the documents that actually changed. So any documents marked as add or update get split into chunks embedded and written in the vector store. Everything else is ignored. Then at the end, we clean up the leftover documents. After checking all the documents, we look up the SQL table. Any rows that do not have the current run ID stamp mean that those documents were not seen in the run, so they've been probably deleted upstream. Then we remove the chunks from the vector store and delete all the rows from our small table. And that's the entire trick. Compare documents early, chunk later. So what are the key points of this approach? First, speed. On a corpus with 10,000 documents, fixing one typo only reprocesses 20 or 30 chunks, not thousands. Second, cost. You only pay for the embedding API for the small percentages of documents that actually changed, not for every single document. Third one, memory. Because documents are handled in batches, you don't have to load all of your documents at once into memory. That first of all means low RAM usage, and second, if your documents are too large to fit into memory, this means low RAM usage if your documents even fit into memory. We also got no leftover documents. Anything not processed during the run gets cleaned up automatically. No old zombie documents. So this was the theory behind it. I'm gonna show you that project in practice now. Okay, I'm now in VS Code and if you also want to have the code, then you can download it from the link in the description. So on the left, you can see multiple files. The most important for this project are the files in the app folder. So that's the chunk level sync manager and also the document level sync manager. So these keep track of the chunk in the vector store and also the original documents. The documents are in that raw data documents folder and here we've got like 500 txt files. So the key functionality for this project is inside the doc level SQL record manager. Here you can see we've got a table and also this doc level SQL record manager which inherits from the SQL record manager 
from Langchain. So this also already provides a lot of functionality that we need, but we extend it a little bit to uh, make our batch approach feasible. So what's happening here is the following. So we've got a document with a document ID and we compute the hash over one specific document, over the page content and the metadata. We now got a hash and we compare it for the document with this specific ID. If the old hash is none, so if we don't have a hash for this document ID, then we want to add this document. If the hashes are the same, then we want to skip it. If the hash is existing, but it's not the same as the new hash, then we want to update the document. We then gonna use this class and use it in a more high level doc level sync manager. Here you can see we provide this doc level SQL record manager uh, class as attribute. And here we have got this absurd docs functionality. So this is responsible for making our batch process possible. So here we start with zero added documents at the beginning, zero skipped and zero updated. And then we iterate over a list of documents that we provide. And then we run the absurd doc method of our manager. Here we provide the doc ID for every document. And then we add to the stats at the end. So we can see how many documents were added, how many were skipped and how many documents were updated. At the end, we then gonna clean up the unused documents. For the chunk level sync manager, we provide a little bit of functionality around the normal indexing API from Langchain. So we're gonna use a record manager here and we're also gonna use the index function from Langchain. So what we're gonna do is that we provide a list of documents, we use this record manager, we use the vector store that we provide to this class and we're gonna use cleanup mode incremental. The incremental mode of the cleanup functionality means that if the source document has been deleted in the vector store, then the uh, document will not be deleted in the vector store. So this is why we are gonna use this leftover cleanup functionality, which after that, after the indexing, cleans up the documents. And this is important because we only want to clean up the documents after we are done with our current run. We're gonna use these classes in an API so we can just send our documents to an API endpoint. And we got this chunking router and the document router. Both have the start endpoint, which will create a run ID. Then we can use the upload endpoint where we provide a list of documents. These documents then get synced in our chunk sync manager. And very important at the end, we have to make a request to the finish endpoint. Because only after making that request, then we're gonna clean up the leftover documents. The same applies for the documents endpoint where we create a run ID. Then we're gonna upload our initial documents where we're gonna upsert the documents inside our document level store. And very important from that, we return a list of changed IDs. So at the end, the user will see, aha, uh -huh, that's my documents that have changed. And I only want to send these documents to the chunk level endpoints. We also at the end have to make a request to the finish endpoint since we're gonna uh, clean up the leftover documents. Okay, that was the core functionality to make this project run. Please use UV. Since I also used UV to set it up, here you can see the UV log file. Run UV, pip install, and then dot, because everything is in the current directory. After that, just type UV, run Python, and then main.py. This will set up our API, and this API is running on port 8000. So here it is slash docs, you can see the Swagger UI and for example, you can just click here and for this you get a new run ID, which is a UUID, then you upload the documents and at the end you finish the run with the same UUID. I don't want to click here and upload a bunch of documents here. So I created this ingest.py file here in the project and this is responsible for making all of the requests to our API endpoints and we're also gonna use the raw folder data. So we're gonna send like 500 documents to the API. Okay, to make that work, then please run UV, run Python, and then the ingest.py. There are a lot of print statements that we can clearly follow up everything. And we can see that we send it 494 documents. 
and all of them should be added. Here you can see documents added. These are far more documents than the original chunks, of course, because we split the original documents into smaller chunks. This will take some time now, and after that, the synchronization has finished. Of course, only documents now get updated, uh, get added, but never updated and never deleted. Okay, now we've got documents in our doc level sync manager and also in the vector store. So if you run it again, then nothing should happen. We can see that every single batch was skipped. This means that everything is identical and we don't have to run into our chunk level sync manager. Now let's go into the raw data folder and add a little bit of text inside that and maybe in another document too. We also a little bit of text here. Okay, so let's close it and run it again. So this time we have got some changes. We can see that we updated this batch and this batch. So two files were updated. We can see which files that were doc 250 and doc 3. Yeah, that's exactly correct. So this means at the end for these two documents, we want to go in the chunk level manager, which means that we added some documents and we also deleted some. So adding and deleting at a chunk level perspective means actually updating. We also skipped some documents. So this is very, very fast. We only do it for the documents that we know have changed, but not for every document. Okay, that's it. Let me know your thoughts on this approach in the comments. Thank you very much for watching. And of course, feel free to experiment with that code as you want. See you in the next video. Bye bye.